Getting in the backlash from Philly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to stand on everything you say just as a man. Um, but obviously, they small clipped it and just took one line of what uh, was really talked about. But um, no pun intended or no disrespect to Hurts. I think he's doing great this year. Um, but you know what I mean? I'm a defensive guy. And, you know, I said their Eagles defense is just a team to watch. I mean, I mean, they just got hell of a players over there that's been making plays all year. So from a defensive aspect, you know, I know how uh, offensive guys just kind of get all the credit. So I just want to stick up for the defensive guys. Because the conversation was most valuable player is it just quarterback. So I was just, you know, having good conversations with Vaughn, a person I look up to, um, helped him on his podcast. And next thing you know, Storm, so um, you see how that goes. And, and we're, yeah, we're just talking football. I mean, not ones that I ever disrespect Hurts or any other player in any way. Um, I'm just talking football. Like, if football is a, a hurtful conversation, then what are we playing for? I think the job's more hurtful than conversation. Like, right. You know, so, uh, you know, if we can't have opinions, I mean, you guys get to talk shit all day. Why can't we just <laughs> talk a little chatter, you know? So uh, I don't understand. Uh, we're so hurtful when we talk about each other. You know, we're the players. We play every day. Yeah, Micah Parsons <laughs> snapping <laughs> off the lines, Burt Breer, line after line. I kind of agree with him, I, though. Right, I, it was, it, it was I mean, fun. Like, it's like, like why, why shouldn't they just be allowed to talk shop? You know what I mean? It's actually it's their shop. Like, you know what right. I mean? Like, Talking shop, and should... it's our shop. Right. Yeah, why, like, why shouldn't they be allowed to talk shop? And you know what, but it's, it's funny because it, it, it lets you know, I always want to know, I know you do too, I always want to know how players see players. Like any industry, I want to see how, mus- yeah. what, what, what do musicians think of other musicians and, and what do journalists right. think of other journalists? You don't want to have that conversation. Oh, so much, <laughs> yeah. so much pettiness. This is such a petty industry. Oh. Anyway. You know, uh, you, but, I, I, like you, yeah, you don't want to know the truth about what some people think of you, for sure. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's what they say to you, and then when you leave it, what do they say when you, what you leave yeah. it? Um, but, but Micah Parsons, do you think this has any effect at all uh, on the next two games for the Cowboys, I say that intentionally because they have the Jaguars. Mm-hmm. On uh, they have the Jaguars before they play uh, Philadelphia on Christmas Eve. Will this have I, uh, any effect on either game? No, I mean, I like well for for one thing, obviously, you know the Cowboys need every game they can get to 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 get themselves in position to try and win that division. Obviously their margin for error is very slim right now because they're they're down two games with four games to go. Um, And as for the game on Christmas Eve, I mean, it's one of those situations, Michael, like, I mean, we, I know like, cause we build these things up, um, you know, cause we have so much time to talk about every football game. Uh, You know, like we'll always say like, oh, I can't believe he said this, but I sort of feel like that's the proverbial you know, if you need something to get you up for that game, well, then, you know, there's probably some more things wrong with you, you know, because that's that's a gigantic game. It's a rivalry game. You know, both teams are going to be in the playoffs. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, there's a, a lot of crossover guys who know each other on each side. So um, it's fun to talk about. And I'm sure we'll be talking about it a lot more next week, too, when the two teams are actually playing. Uh, but I can't imagine um, I can't imagine that it's going to have any effect on the game. And oh, by the way, like when we're talking about Jalen Hurts for MVP. That's a conversation we're all naturally going to be having. You know what right. I mean? Like so much of it, like when you talk about it, like one of the reasons why Patrick Mahomes is going to be back up for MVP again this year is because there were changes around him. You know, Patrick Mahomes is still the great player he always was. Why would he be MVP this year over, say, last year or the year before? Well, it's because he lost Tyree Kill. You know what I mean? Like it's because right. he lost Tyree Kill and he had to break in Valdez Scantling and he had to break in Smith Schuster and Sky Moore and um, you know, so like, you know, I one reason why when I did my my and this is an executives poll I did, um, you know, at mid season, the the reason overwhelmingly they all voted for Mahomes, so many of them voted for Mahomes was because of the environment around him and because you know, yeah. the he needed to be a little bit better to maintain the level that he's maintained over the first five, six years of his career. And I think that's the, I mean, the conversation, I think, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but that's the conversation I think Micah Parsons was trying to have there is the conversation we're all going to have about Jalen Hurts, which is how much of it is Jalen Hurts and how much of it is a really good environment around him. 
Yeah, and I think even, even Patrick Mahomes, so by that logic, and I understand what the executives are saying or what people are saying, even with Patrick Mahomes, the environment is still great. <laughs> I mean, He's still, got Andy Reid. I mean, you got Andy <laughs> Reid and Eric Bieniemy, and yeah. you have a, a culture. When they win, win, not if. Uh, when they win the AFC West, Bert, that's going to be their seventh straight uh, yeah. AFC West title. Uh, they never lose to the Broncos. I don't think they, yeah. they're never going to lose to the Broncos again. I mean, they got 14 in a row. I think well, they I mean, are like, something ridiculous. Come on. Yeah. There's an expectation. There's a culture there that is excellent. And Patrick Mahomes is amazing, transcendent. We got it. Yep. But even those well, guys, even those superstars are, are supported by great infrastructure. I mean, look at it like, you know, and, and I'm not saying these guys wouldn't have made it otherwise, but Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Matt Nagy is a rookie, then Eric Bieniemy after that, throwing to Tyreek Hill. They signed Sammy Watkins. He had veteran tackles when he got there and Eric Fisher and Mitchell Schwartz. He had, at the time, Kareem Hunt behind him at running back. Josh Allen in Buffalo, same offensive coordinator the first four years of his career, and Brian Dayball, who's done a nice job with the Giants in his first year as a head coach. Sean McDermott as the head coach. Brandon Bean as the general manager. Stefan Diggs comes in in his second year. Um, he had the same left tackle the whole time in Deion Dawkins. Yeah, Lamar Jackson, you know, goes to a place where Greg Roman's the offensive coordinator, has background in the perfect offense for Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson has an elite left tackle in front of him in Ronnie Stanley, um, at least through the early parts of his career. And again, it's not saying these guys wouldn't be successful uh, otherwise, but you know, when you want to look at the great quarterbacks in the league, there's generally great stability around them. And I guess we can have a chicken and egg argument there, but you know, there's no question that, you know, these guys are almost uniformly in great environments. You know, I mean, you can, you know, we can, we can say the same thing about Brady and Manning when they came into the league, right? Like, Brady had a Hall of Fame coach. Manning Both of them had a did. Hall of yeah, Fame right. GM. Look at that. <laughs> you know what and, I mean? Like, and, but Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame GM, and eventually a Hall of Fame coach. Right. So I mean, like, it wasn't right away, but but, yeah. that, but that Hall of Fame, but but that Hall of Fame GM, Michael, was putting Hall of Fame players around him. Like if you Marvin right. Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Dallas Clark. I mean, I, I you know Dwight Franey on the other side of the ball. Like it's crazy. I, if you look at like Bill Polian's like first round picks, like the three or four years after Peyton Manning got there, it's like three or four hall of famers. You know what I mean? Like Edger and James, another one, you know, like, so it, it, like I, there's a, there's a great chicken and egg argument to be had there because you almost never find a great quarterback who overcame like, like really bad circumstances. Uh, now here's a, you, you know, you mentioned Buffalo. Uh, this is a, a, a Buffalo a, adjacent story. No, it's really a Buffalo story <laughs> because yeah. uh, I want to talk about Miami, but Buffalo, they're going to Buffalo and they're going to play forecast. Looks like it's going to be under 30 degrees. I, 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 it's a typical Buffalo Saturday under 30 degrees, three to seven inches of snow. Hey, this is what we do in Buffalo, but it's not what mm -hmm. Miami does in Buffalo. And so uh, I, I want you to listen to uh, Mike McDaniel talk about going to Buffalo and checking the forecast and all that stuff. Listen to this. The biggest thing is, like, yeah, you, you do adjust um, a hair, you know, we won't be outside and, um, you know, you do it, but you don't really prepare for it um, besides mentally deciding if it's going to matter to you or not. Um, I kind of look at it like this. Uh, do the Buffalo Bills players vacation in Buffalo. I mean, people, so yeah, you get used to it, but you don't, it's a mindset as well. So um, to me, uh, you, you just decide if you're gonna let it factor in or not, um, and then you adjust as best you can. All right, so Bert, I, I just wanna say this, man, look. <clears throat> I've always lived in cold weather cities, grew up in Ohio, uh, worked mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh, worked in Chicago for a second, uh, live in Boston. So always a cold weather city. And there are little yep. like conversational hints. I could tell the people who actually get out there with the shovel themselves or a snowplow themselves or have somebody do it for them. 
I think Mike McDaniel mm. has somebody do it for him, okay? And we're like, what the hell are you talking about, <laughs> man? What are you talking about? Oh, it's a mindset. No, it's not a mindset. When you're out there shoveling snow for 20, 25 minutes and it's coming down, there ain't no mindset and mind over. No, it's real snow and it's real wind <laughs> and it's cold. <laughs> it is uncomfortable. What are you talking about? He doesn't know. I, I'm, like, later, Bert. In my bet your money, I, I'm thinking about picking Miami just by, with the with the points. Yeah, that's foolish. I, I think they may not score. <laughs> I may not say <laughs> like they may I, not score I based think, on those comments. You know what I think is interesting too? Like, I, by the way, I'm in an in between guy. We have someone come plow our driveway, but I do shovel the walkway. So exactly, I guess I'm right. in between. <laughs> yeah, in between, in between. Okay, right. You've been out there. You know what yeah. it's like, at least. Yeah, you know I, I think like. When you hear somebody talk, when you hear a team talk about it so much, it's already in their head, right? Like when you hear like that much talk about it, the conversation goes all week. It's sort of, I, I feel like it's sort of already in their head. And it was funny because I, I think it was one of Lebetard's guys like said, there's a clip floating around the internet that like all... Um, that Buffalo should be required to have a roof on their stadium. Oh. It's like, hang on a second. I'm oh, like, hang no. on a second. Like, doesn't Miami force teams in September, like road teams, to stand on the sideline where the sun is shining, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And don't they wear white in Miami to force the other team into dark colors in September? Is that right? That's right. That's so, right. So it's a home field. It's a home field advantage. It's so an you're advantage for Miami. Your advantage, but now that it doesn't work for you, right. it's not cool anymore. And, I, and, like, so. Yeah. I mean, so, so no, but I, I, I honestly believe this. Like, I, I think so much of it is like, you can almost tell the way that people talk about it. Right. And like, it does sound to me to some degree, like the Miami people have been talking themselves into this, not trying to talk themselves into this, not mattering much rather than just saying, you know, the, the, the conditions are what they are and we're going to go up there and we're going to deal with them. And that's it. You know? How much have you heard about the Buffalo people talking about the conditions? Yeah, not None. much. And, and, <laughs> right. and, and Bert, here's the other thing, what they did. I, yeah. And I don't know if this is a joke, but this is almost comical. I, 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 ho I hope they did this just to make people laugh. They turned on the AC in Miami. They turned on the AC so it could be cold. I, okay. In the bubble? Yeah. In the bubble? All right, this, yeah. this is what I know. This is what I know about AC. When it gets really cold, you know what you can do? You can turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Come on, man. You turn the AC on. You turn the AC on. Doesn't, okay. Belichick, doesn't Belichick turn the heat on, though, when they go to Miami? Isn't yeah. that right? But then he, got, then, he, then he figured it out. Hey, you know, that doesn't replicate it. They went to Miami. They stayed for a week, and it still right. didn't. It didn't make a difference. They still... Only, only scored a touchdown. Uh, uh, we're still Miami waiting for the first, first Southern the team to do that in reverse, right? To go up and spend the week in, in Buffalo. Or oh, oh, yeah. Or players, <laughs> you know, see, the players are, the players always tell the coaches, the hey, players coach. players are okay with going yeah. to Miami hey, in coach, September. I think That's we got so cool to go to Miami. I think we got to go to Miami. I, I'm just thinking about the best interest of the team. You know, you have somebody in Miami. Hey, coach, we need to go to Buffalo. We need to spend some time in Buffalo, really get the culture, you know, understand Anyway, hey, Bert Breer. I think, we need to, I, I, think we need, I think we need to acclimate to northern Wisconsin. So let's go stay in Appleton this week. We can go work, at the high, work out at the high school up there. <laughs> hey, hey, Bert, I was going to let you go, but just one thing I want you to respond to. Uh, uh, Adam Schefter mm -hmm. just tweeted this out. Guess who's going to start for the New York Jets against the Lions? Guess who your starting quarterback is for the New York Jets? It's not Joe Flacco. It's not Mike White. It is... Zach, Zach Wilson. Wilson. So yeah. how, how do you because I, I, I was talking to Robert Mays earlier and he said, hey, I understand why the Jets did what they did uh, with Zach Wilson. They're trying to set a culture there, establish a culture. I think they screwed it up. What do you expect uh, from from Zach Wilson and in, in, in this game going forward, especially if he plays well? well? So I mean, like, I, I think we have to look at it this way, like his future in New York is on the line now, right? Like, and I think that that um, when you invest the second overall pick, the reality is like you, you you have to get an answer on that investment and you have to figure out whether or not you're right on that investment because it's going to affect big picture decisions down the line. 
And I think, you know, Robert Sala's done a nice job of walking a tightrope here where it's about one player, but it isn't. And I think he recognizes that they have to gather as much information as they possibly can to make an informed decision on Zach Wilson. But oh, 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 by the way, they're in a playoff race right now, and they've got a defense that's playoff ready. And there are a lot of elements on that offense that are playoff ready. And, you know, I, I think there was a point there where I think it probably became hard for Robert Sala to sell Zach Wilson to the locker room. And then Wilson said what he said after that Patriot game. Mm. And then I think it became really, really hard to sell Wilson to that locker room. So this tells me he's probably had a couple of nice weeks of practice. And 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 Rob feels like he can sell Zach to that locker room again. And, you know, it's important for the franchise too, Michael. And I think if this was ever, if this, I think it was, if this ever got close again, where they felt like, okay, like we can put Zach back in there. They were going to do it mm. because they really do need to get answers because again, like, that team is very young and they're only going to get better i think next year right like there's so many elements that team if you look at the garrett wilson's the sauce gardeners the Oliveira tuckers you'll be bringing Brees hall back quinn and williams those guys should all get better right how are you going to serve next year's team without having a full answer on zach wilson hmm. well i think over the next month part of the deal and they won't say this but part of the deal is getting an answer on zach wilson can we trust zach wilson can the locker room trust zach wilson to take what we think is going to be a real contender in 2023 and make it his team or do we have to go out and get a guy like jimmy garoppolo who oh by the way was with all of the jets coaches in san francisco so i think that that's what's interesting about this over the next month Zach Wilson's fighting for his future in New York, and part of it is the availability of a quarterback who's played at a championship level that all the coaches have background with. Hey, fascinating stuff. Uh, Burt Breer, you play at a championship level every time you come on the show, and you are around champions. And we'll talk about that in 2023 because there will be a championship parade in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, you didn't think? Wow. Oh, you wow. thought we weren't going to talk about it? We always <laughs> talk about this. We're on the show together. We got I don't know if I believe too. that. It sounded you know good. What? I don't know if Marvin I believe it. Marvin Harrison <laughs> switching to number one for the playoffs. I'm going to send you a text <laughs> with a picture, Michael. All right. I don't know if I believe what I just said. I just thought it was a good thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.